right, Matilda, thank you so much uh, for joining me. Uh, Zone 414 is brilliant. Uh, Brian Edward Hill, I think, is an amazing writer. Uh, you had a brilliant director, Andrew uh, Baird. I hope I said his last name correctly. Uh, first question I have for you is, what is Zone 414? Zone 414 is the city of robots, and it's the only city where humans and robots can live together. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, you really shaped the tone, a tone of the tone of the film with your character, uh, Jane. Can you tell me a little bit about Jane? Yes, Jane is uh, the first android ever created, and she's the special one. They call her the Snowflake. So, uh, she's the uh, android that David uh, Carmichael finds to uh, get help when seeking for Melissa, Marlon Levitt's daughter. Yep. Uh, now, what were some of the qualities that drew you to the role? And did you draw any inspiration uh, from anywhere else to help inform the character of Jane? Uh, so what really resonated with me was how um, in the real world, <laughs> we're so uh, becoming androids in a way. <laughs> and androids are becoming so real and human. <laughs> Uh, and I love that contrast that the movie talks about. And, and I really relate it to that. And especially to Jane, how she's an android, but she's struggling to, to understand if she's human or not. Absolutely. Now, you have such a great balance with the character because you're, you're not really playing her human, but you're not really playing her as a robot either or an android either. Can you talk to me about the challenge of balancing the performance for the role of Jane? Uh, so what I really wanted to work on before I started uh, filming was how I wanted to play with emotions to humanize her, which is basically what, uh, you know, what's for us, uh, the, what, what characterizes us humans is emotions. So that's, that was something very important for me, for her to really feel things and also have a look that was a little bit artificial. So wow. playing with the wigs, and wigs that looked like wigs, not like real hair, and using colors that were very flashy. So that's what I worked on first before uh, trying to, like, you know, get her get like be, get her to be real. That was the first, yeah, that was the first thing that I that I worked on. And then it was always hard to balance, if I have to be honest, you know, because there's some scenes that required. Uh, the the human side of her and some scenes that required her to be more robotic in a way. Yeah, you know, um, that's an interesting uh, thing that you bring up, actually, because we actually see uh, Guy Pierce's character, David, uh, we see his humanity a little bit through his interactions with Jane. And there's a scene, actually, uh, where Guy Pierce's character, uh, David, asks Jane about her apartment, and she responds with, um, as a machine, as a machine, she wants to forget being a machine. Uh, why does Jane, Jane is the snowflake, but why uh, does Jane earn, uh, yearn to be real? Uh, I, I have a feeling that we're always looking to, in a way, to be someone that we're not right. <laughs> and always looking to really see who we are. And it's a constant, you know, struggle that us humans have. And I wanted her to have that same struggle. So she's an android, but she's struggling to find out if she's human. And uh, her acting like a human is gonna, is gonna give her a sense of being human. And that's why at a certain point, she cuts herself to really see what's underneath and, and understand if she's human because she feels so intensely emotions that she almost feels like she's human and she's struggling to understand what's really, who, who she really is. Um, you get to work with the amazing Guy Pierce in this film. Uh, can you talk to me about working with him and what he brought to the character of David that wasn't necessarily on the page? Um, I mean, uh, he was one of the reasons I wanted to be on this project. Um, I love him and I'm a big fan and I was not disappointed <laughs> in meeting him because he was such a great partner and he taught me so much and he was so present and by having the experience that he has, it was such a, a blessing, you know, because I got to learn so much. And Andrew 
uh, Baird, the director, he was, uh, you know, it was his first film. So he, he let us play a lot and he was a great partner to play with. That's amazing. Now, another person in this film that completely disappears in the role is Travis, Travis Femmel. Like I did not even realize that was him in this. It was almost like that, that Marlon Brando experience uh, from, from, um, I uh, forgot the platoon or whatever it was where, where, uh, where he comes out and he just looks completely different. Can you talk to me about working with Travis uh, in this film? So I don't have scenes with him, unfortunately, but I met him and I saw the whole pro makeup process in the trailer. And I was so surprised when I, when I got in the trailer, he had his makeup on and I didn't recognize him. And I thought it was so weird looking and, <laughs> and, and you know, it was, it, it was really intense and strong as a look. So I, and he's a great guy as well, but I, I didn't get to work with him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, what I love about this film too, is that it has this like neo-noir vibe to it, almost kind of like a Blade Runner-esque. Um, the scale of the film looks brilliant, but can you talk to me about the collaboration process working with Andrew uh, Baird uh, and his team? Because Look, the, the film looks massive, but I, I heard him saying that it's still like a small independent film shot in like Ireland. And I was I was blown away by it. So can you just talk about working with him as a collaborator? Yes. Uh, so when I first met him, um, he I just saw a very strong visual point of view of the film. So we worked with uh, references and music and uh, we spoke to Brian, the writer and uh, it was a very open, creative process with them, which was great as, as an artist to work with. And then I, I also thought that the locations in Dublin were absolutely amazing because it was a contrast between futuristic and uh, decadent. Sure. <laughs> uh, and they recreated the, uh, uh, the like inside part of uh, Zone 414 when you see all the androids and and when I got inside of inside this like area, it was like, you know, mind blowing to see what they created. And he had a very, very strong like visual view, you know, of the film. So that really helped. Absolutely. Now, sometimes um, sci-fi projects can be used as cautionary tales. Uh, what are you hoping audiences take away with Zone 414? Um, you know, what I was talking ab about before, how it's so close to our real world in a way, how we're getting there uh, with like social media and right. androids and, and artificial intelligence and how when I started researching uh, for Jane, like for references and, and how I wanted to create the character, I realized that there are influencers and models that are digital and that don't really exist. And oh, wait, what? Yeah, so I started looking on Instagram and there are actually androids, influencers that don't really exist, but they are like real accounts and they're managed by real agents really? <laughs> and they make real money. And to me, that was like really shocking, you know, in a way like we're already there and we like I personally didn't know because I'm very old school in some ways. And, and so I hope that you know, what, what people get is that we are very lucky to be human and to have those qualities that we have to take very um, dear to us, you know? Absolutely. I had no idea about that Instagram stuff either. Now, now you're going to send me down a rabbit hole. It's like searching. Yeah. Tonight. Yeah. Look, but Hilda, you did a phenomenal job in this film. You, I mean, I, you, to me, I think you really carried the film and you really set the tone for the film. Uh, congratulations. Uh, and thank, thank you so much. much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you.